Hey, Rick, know what's awesome? What? Star Wars. Tonight we're going to talk about Star Wars. <laughs> Star Wars, not in great detail. Star Wars as related to The Mandalorian, which is the first great Star Wars epic that's come out of Star Wars since 1983. Ooh, so, that's uh, a brave statement. <laughs> so, <laughs> a true statement and a brave statement. You can you can uh, follow along with this because the the Mandalorian's awesome. We are absolutely still on quarantine, and yep. so here I am. I'm Billy Stewart, one of your hosts. I'm here with Rick Morgan, the other one of your hosts. And so, how's your quarantine going, my friend? It's going very well, man. I've uh, I haven't had to kill the Amish that live next door yet, so uh, it's it's going pretty good. You know, I got to thinking if things got bad enough, you could probably knock one of those off and you know, one of those people off, and nobody'd ever miss them. So, yeah, nobody would really know. Like, yeah. So that's that's kind of my backup plan. <laughs> I, I imagine the the Amish are just going to pop out of their hovels one day and just be like, "Oh, we've been hoarding vaccines. Would you like?" Stop making fun of us now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Probably so. And we've also got some toilet paper pressed from wood chips. You were also making fun of that. <laughs> the Amish are just going to take over the world by just being them. <laughs> it's been their plan all along. <laughs> so what about you guys? Doing all right? Um, you know, things are good. The school sent down this massive book of schoolwork for the kids and my wife and I are looking at it being like nah we know our kids you're not teaching them that much stuff in a week <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> but but you're not you're not doing that like so it's, <laughs> tomorrow's going to be interesting but whatever you know we got tonight it's cool um, the kids are asleep right now Let's talk about Star Wars. Star Wars is better than homeschooling children. <laughs> yeah. yeah, in some degrees. <laughs> so, Unless you're talking about the holiday special. Uh, even then, my kids are so glued to TV, they just be like, I love it. Buy me the action figures. <laughs> Lucas really kind of knew what he was doing whenever he made those uh, action figures. But... um. So you all caught up on Mando, Mandalorian? Oh yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah, I, I'm just, I just it brings out the 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 young kid in me again watching this show because it's it feels like four, five, and six. It has that kind of feel to it. Um, I don't know, man. I, you said it while I go. I think it's the best thing they've done since the original trilogy. This is the way. Maybe even better than than Return of the Jedi. Return of the Jedi is not one of my favorites, believe it or not. See, it probably wouldn't be critically, but I saw that in the theater when I was like yeah. seven years old, and that's the reason why I can't be too harsh on the sequel trilogy uh, with my daughter, because my daughter sure. has been sitting there wide-eyed watching it. I mean, Star Wars is it's generational, first of all, but... Right. Yeah. It, and even when they're doing things wrong, they do things spectacularly wrong, but the cool thing about star wars is that they do everything spectacularly whatever it is they're doing so when they do it well they do it spectacularly well and whenever they do it badly they do it spectacularly badly so you gotta you gotta have a little bit of patience with star wars i guess because um it, it, yeah it, it does require it because when you said when they do something bad they do it spectacularly and, and two things come to mind with me <laughs> <laughs> Uh, in the, uh, the prequels, well, we, well, no, when they went back and they redid four and they put, they tried to put Jabba back in the shot with Han Solo at the Millennium Falcon yep. and he steps on his tail and wow, that still looks terrible. <laughs> and then I have to say, I mean, Princess Leia floating through space like Mary Poppins, uh, that just, I, that was uh, not yeah. good. Hey, Jedi craves not these things. Yeah, no. Nah. There, there was a lot. There's again. There's, there's so much. We all do. We all like. Whoa, what? 
Yeah. Um, I put a Facebook post out because so several of my friends who like to defend the bad Star Wars side of things were like, well, you know, it was made for children, and that's George Lucas. And I was like, dude, Lord of the Rings was made for children, and Chronicles of Narnia was made for children. Harry Potter was made for children. You can you can be made for children and not suck. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, it, it's possible. You can't use that as an yeah. excuse because children are smart and they they think. Well, you know they think. And, and, say, they and saying that too, and within saying that, the same reason that you're saying that you liked Return of the Jedi is the same reason I didn't because I was 11 at the time. And I think it's that thing where, you know, you just went through episode four and you went through Empire. Empire was like mm -hmm. <laughs> mind blown, right? Uh, didn't seem real kitty, you know? And then Return of the Jedi came out when I was 11 and it seemed like a, the Muppet show when I saw the previews. And I was like, you know, I was kind of past that point. And I was like, yeah, I don't know. Now, saying that, and I go back, I mean, it's got possibly the best fight scene of any of the movies with between Darth and, and Luke, mm -hmm. you know, in front of the Emperor. That's just iconic. But uh it took me a while to come to, to warm up to, to Return of the Jedi. And uh it's still not one of my favorites, but I'd I'd rather watch it than any of the prequels or the sequels. That's that's where I'm at. And that's why I think that's why uh Mandalorian was so good was because yeah. what one of one of my biggest criticisms of the sequels and the prequels. And it's, I think it's real though, is that the world felt lived in the, the world felt like yep. the real world. The world felt like what one of us have transported into a galaxy far, far away. You know, they had trees and they had dirt and they had dents and drama and laundry like just, it like they yeah. could they could fly away a, a hundred light years but whenever they landed they still had a a, a lunch kit like it was right it was it was realistic in a in a real living sort of way especially for a small child you know it's like you think about superman getting kicked off to to, to out of krypton and it's like his parents didn't know if he was going to be able to eat when he landed. Right. They were just yeah. they were just hoping. When Luke's in his X-wing, at least he's got his little survival pack. You know, it's like he's right. it's it's a it's a real it feels real. And well, and I I think part of that too is because when we saw those, it was new, right? So you had Episode Four, and it was still an ongoing saga of things we haven't seen before. Now, you already have a premeditated idea in your head what Star Wars is supposed to look like. And when it doesn't match that, you know, well, I mean, look at what they shot on. You had some sets back in the day. You actually went out and shot some stuff in the woods for your Return of the Jedi stuff, whereas now everything's CGI. Mm -hmm. So that, that lived-in thing that you're talking about, I think, is a lot of that. People are now having to react to things that aren't even there. And I think that you can tell that mm -hmm. even though it looks, it looks incredible. It still feels synthetic. And I think that's, what's so cool about Mandalorian is because it feels real. Like, even though it's not because I saw a making of maybe it's and not. all the scenery, all the, all the scenery is a huge TV screen that they stand in front of. And that blew me away. I was like, wow. But at least, they're, at least it's something that's actually kind of there. You they're, know? they're really good at it, and like the yeah. the baby Yoda is a puppet, so it like, yeah. Mando with his helmet on is still reacting to something that's in right. the room with him, yeah. and it's. But the the just the little things like um, the droids turning the little uh, combination. Thing yes. in in that one episode on the on the with Bill Burr the Bill Burr episode right <laughs> yeah and the the, the the droids turn in the little thing and you're like oh that's that's throwback but the thing exactly. is like that yeah. was that was all over the Death Star yeah that was yep. current technology for them well whatever it was right. they were doing um it's interesting because yep. our technology has bypassed theirs 
in just 40 years. <laughs> but so people are like, oh, well, why couldn't the Death Star plans? They're like, oh, this is a really big file. It's going to take a while to upload. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> you know, and like there, there's a lot of us that that we remember those days, but we're spoiled to not being in those days anymore. Right. The Death Star yeah. files did, aren't that big. Why don't, Vader, why don't Vader just pull out his cell phone and call them and say, hey, stop those guys getting on that chip, yep. right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like, so, you know, technology just moves differently. The cool thing about <laughs> Mandalorian, uh, Rogue One, the, the ones that actually care about telling a story instead of uh, yep. Selling toys instead of it being a instead of it being a bunch of flash, it actually put some some work and some thought behind it. I'm with you on Rogue One too because a lot of people give it a lot of flack, but man, I thought it was a great in between piece that kind of married some things together. And the best scene of Vader you're ever going to see mm-hmm. is in that movie. It's hands down the best Vader scene ever put on film, and it gets a lot of flack because. You know, and and I'm not I'm I'm old school. You know, I come from that first generation of Star Wars fans, so it's always going to be hard. You're going to measure everything up to the first, just like you do with Superman. Everything's going to be against Christopher Reeve for me. That's just the way it works. But um, and I get it. I get the new fans liking the news. It 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 looks fantastic. The fight scenes are way beyond anything they could do in four, five, and six. So I get it. But the Mandalorian gets it back to that nasty gritty Mm -hmm. more more hand combat kind of thing instead of doing super flips and moving things with your mind you're getting back to that block and tackle kind of fighting style and you're taking a basically a spaghetti western and crossing it with uh lone wolf and cub you know the the the, the japanese story absolutely yeah you've created this this gunslinger in the west but it's in a star wars you know universe and it's brilliant and that that was one of my things with with the prequels and every you know was with yoda who's one of the more powerful force users even vader when vader's fighting luke he's struggling really hard to throw a box across a room like yeah he's got he's got choice force powers but it's it's you know, like you're not able to move planets like you're not pulling planets out of their gravitational pull <laughs> you're not that strong like you can't just throw people into the sun you're not superman like right. you you can manipulate reality to a certain extent and maybe a little bit more depending on your will but you can't just like you can't control the universe. <laughs> and if you can, then why the hell are you standing on the Death Star force choking a colleague? You should just, like, <laughs> drive that thing to wherever you want to be and, like, mess things up as, as you want to mess up. So that yeah, was the thing and, is, and is, is with Star Wars, kind of their, their, their fights are more, again, like last week, Karate Kid, like, uh, yeah. You punch me, I'll punch you, and we'll just keep punching each other until somebody falls down. That doesn't yeah. work in a universe where you can just go like this and <laughs> fling somebody into the sun. It like doesn't work that way. So, right. and that's, yeah, and you know that that's hard. It's hard to balance that out, and 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 I, maybe that's one of those things where a lot of us growing up was pulled towards Boba Fett because. He's kind of like Batman. Mm-hmm. He don't really have any superpowers, but he has all these tools in his belt. And he knows how to do some hand-to-hand, and he's good at it. Yeah. So, yeah, and, and I think that's the draw. So, you know, these guys making The Mandalorian has basically made what we've been waiting for our whole life is a show about Boba Fett. Mm-hmm. But Lucas kind of went and screwed that up because supposedly he's a clone of Jango Fett. So I've just, man... And I've said this on Hail Ming a bunch. You're raping my childhood, Lucas. Yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> Eat. <laughs> Eat. You know, so taking this character and like revamping him, rebooting it, and making him not Boba Fett, but a Boba Fett type character, and running with it like it would be Boba Fett, you, you kind of have to swallow that pill first. 
But once it gets going, and come on, first episode, you get to see, you know, the Mandalorian and IG-88, which we know it's not IG-88, but it's IG-88. <laughs> <Yep. laughs> this is the dream we had as a kid to see this happen, and we're getting to see it. And, you know, the payoff has been fantastic. And plus, you've got Werner Herzog in here playing characters. you got, you know, Carl Weathers. It, it's hitting it on all the levels, man. And you I don't know if you've seen any announcements of who else is coming on board. Um, Rosario, uh, Rosario Dawson. I and, have. It's just... It's amazing. It's taken off. The, yeah, so... The coolest thing that I can say about The Mandalorian that has absolutely nothing to do with Star Wars, Star Wars mythos, uh, none of it, is my daughter Autumn. So when I was... Well, when Juliet, my older daughter, was like four, I was taking a nap on the couch. And I, my wife took, I guess... Autumn was a year old and Juliet was four. Took the kids. So I had the house to myself. So what did I do is I took a nap. And I woke up to my little four-year-old Juliet poking me in the face. Like, Daddy, 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 wake up. Wake up, wake up. I'm like, woke up. She's, I was like, what? She says, do you know about Darth Vader? <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of woke up a little bit more, and I was like, I, I do know about Darth Vader. What do you know about Darth Vader? She's like, Papa, let me watch this movie. And Darth Vader is my favorite, and <laughs> I love Darth Vader, and can we watch the other movie tomorrow? So I called my father-in-law, and I was like, hey, what movie did you watch? He said, He's like, I just watched the first Star Wars. It's like, okay, so we got to watch Empire tomorrow. I'm cool with that. Like... Yeah. yeah, baby. You like Darth Vader? Here's some Darth Vader for you. So my younger one doesn't like Star Wars because she doesn't like Darth Vader scares her. And she's, she does not have the same reaction that the first one does. Well, then some Mandalorian came on and I saw everybody talking about how awesome it was. I was like, you know what, guys? I don't care if you like it or don't like it. I'm going to watch it. You don't have to stay in the room. So me and Juliet were watching it. My wife, Meg and Autumn were, were over at the uh, table doing a puzzle. Autumn's like, I don't want to watch this. I'm not going to watch this. It's scary. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Juliet and I are watching into the show, into the first episode. Autumn's like, out of one corner of her eye, she's like, is that a baby Yoda? <laughs> I'm like, it looks like it. So in the second episode, she's watching with one eye shielded. <laughs> and then by the end of the second episode, she's like, that is a baby Yoda. I like that. Uh, whatever episode, like third or fourth, whenever they're on the planet and the children are playing with the child and yeah, they, yeah. they have to, they, they destroy everything and then they have to leave. Yeah. My six-year-old is fully in. She's on the couch. And then we have to we have to leave the child. No, we have to leave because of the child's own good. She's like, but he's gonna miss all his friends, and she's crying. <laughs> she's all, she's like laying on my lap, just crying and just like it's like all right, we've got a convert here. So now <laughs> in her room, there's a poster of Baby Yoda, the Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. She's got a shirt. She's she, she's a convert. Right, yeah. And so is my wife. She's like, oh, my God, this is amazing. I'm like, yeah, this is, yeah. yeah, see, this is this is why this is important. This is the way. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, and it's incredible how, just like with the case of your daughters, who you identify with, you know. And that's that's what makes, that's always what made Star Wars work for me anyways, because there was your Luke fans, your girls like Princess Leia, you know, then you had your renegade guys that wanted to be Han Solo. Then you had your your baddie with Darth Vader. You know, you're getting that. Well, it's Lord of the Rings in space, really, is what they were going for. <laughs> and, and you know, Obi Wan is Gandalf. So I mean, you know, it, it's however you want to look at it. That's that's where he pulled from. There's no denying it. But you identify with a character, and that's what drags you in, and that's what keeps you there. So. Hey, baby Yoda. I mean, 
did the internet internet not go just insane with Baby Yoda when it came out? I mean, you still see the memes everywhere. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there's there's something to it. I mean, it's it's that uh, that marketing thing. But for you and I, what's better than one Boba Fett? How about a whole bunch of Boba Fetts? All of the Boba Fetts. <laughs> when they come down and they fight in that town, and they're dropping out of the sky with their jet packs and they're shooting the people. I mean, it's just like. This is the greatest moment in cinema history. <laughs> the funny thing is, whenever uh, Mando didn't have a, a jetpack, yeah. and he went down into the cave, and like the 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 the, the uh, what's her name? I can't remember. The Forger girl. She yeah. didn't. She also yeah. didn't have a jetpack. I was like, oh, so Bubba Fett taught them all lessons. Like, <laughs> jetpacks are not good. You shouldn't have one of those. <laughs> because he just, they they're can, like, okay. They can cause you to, yeah. <laughs> and then later on, that guy's, the, all the guys are flying around with jetpacks. So I'm like, oh, okay, I guess they didn't learn anything. <laughs> I mean, if they didn't grow up watching Wile E. Coyote, I guess, because it never worked out for him either. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah, I'll just strap a rocket to my back. Nothing bad can happen. Yeah. Said said evil can evil right. <laughs> hey man, he he's got a legacy though. <laughs> while he Boy, does, does he? while he does, and so does evil. <laughs> Every now and then, you probably gotta strap a rocket to your pack just to stay sane. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so this is where we're getting to the point of needing to talk about the other stuff. So the other stuff. The other stuff. So final thoughts on Mandalorian and Star Wars. Are you looking forward to season two? And are you trying real hard to make your kids not watch the first season a second or third time? Uh, of course, uh, with me, with you know, of course, my kids are all grown. Which I did just hear that they finally finished season one, and they were very pleased with <laughs> my my daughter and son in law. So they're really into it. My granddaughter. I don't like Star Wars, War, so she's one of those. Because right? ah. she's she's four years old, so you know she's into t- Daniel Tiger. So she, if Daniel Tiger had a lightsaber, she'd be all about it. She's gonna need Autumn because <laughs> Autumn's not a big fan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, heck yeah, I'm looking for episode or season two, man. I mean, I, I, I'm anxious to see what this does for the Star Wars universe as far as. Other shows, you know, you're hearing rumors of other things coming out on Obi Wan show and all this stuff, which is fine. Just don't don't overdo it, right? Because when you start overdoing it, it loses its thrill. That's kind of what I felt like with the, the last series. It's almost like they did too much panhandling of trying to satisfy too many different fans. All right, the best way I can describe it, so I don't offend any Star Wars fans, because mm-hmm. I'm one too. Uh, when Kiss got back together, they did the Cycle Circus album, right? Cycle Circus album is them trying to take a song that's reminiscent to a big song they had in the past from every kind of era that they were in. And they tried to make an album of like a greatest hits, but they all be newer songs. And it just didn't really work, right? Because you're trying to please too many people that were fans throughout all the different years Mm -hmm. instead of just being true to whatever's happening in the moment. I really feel like that's what the newer series was. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of, of pleasing the fans with the Mandalorian, without a doubt. But I think it's done the right way. It's not a forced thing, right? <laughs> get that? That's pretty yeah, funny. There you go. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to bring back the entire past cast. I you know. I, I mean, agree. who's the one person we who's the one person we haven't brought back? Oh, the Emperor. Well, didn't he die? Ah, don't matter. We'll bring him back anyways. You know, the, the it, thing was, kinda... with, and, and we can we can do a whole show on the the sequel trilogy. I, I totally agree because I think what happened with the with the sequel series is you had too many irons in the fire. You had too many yep. ideas. Some of them could be good. Some of them might not be good. And then somebody said, "Why don't we just do them all?" And so yeah. it was just kind of, it was choppy, and everybody's just trying to please everybody. 
So, well, yeah, they're they're trying to use the the Marvel mm-hmm. setup because Marvel had done so well f- with Disney. Hey, we'll just use the template and make it work in Star Wars. And I think you almost have to do it backwards because Star Wars, without the Star Wars trilogy being the blockbusters, you don't have the opportunity to set up Marvel like you did. Right. You know, so it's almost like they did it backwards. And, and the thing is, like I said, like when as kids, I didn't really care about what the Force was. Right. Ob- yeah. Obi Wan explained that on the Millennium Falcon on the way to Alderaan. I didn't. Easy enough. I I didn't yeah. really need like I didn't like. There's so many things that I just like. Two seconds of of conversation. I get it. I'm yeah. in. Um, yeah. We we got a bad problem with having to detail everything now instead of it just happening. Right. That, that's a big problem we have. You know, and and you're right. We did not need to know about metachlorians. You know, we it, it, it's it's ridiculous, really. And, and Ray having having like ultra powers with no training. To, to, <laughs> like to be fair, Luke had ultra powers with no training too. But Obi Wan was like, dude, get your ass to Dagobah and learn from the master. Right. Like, you're you're good, but you're not that good. Right. Get get right. your butt home, and um, there there was a lot of that where it's just like okay, well, if you think you know ten things are good, well then twenty things are obviously better, and you're like, well wait, right. she didn't earn twenty yeah. things, so right. um, as far as that, Mandalorian I, has we, the for for me, you know they've they've got the little twisty things for the robots to be able to access things. Um, I, I mentioned that before and you might be like, well, that's a little detail, but it is a, it is a little detail, but it's, it's a big detail. If you think about like access, who has access, the, the different keys and codes, you, you, the death star is not a place where you can just go throw in a, uh, a, a jump drive and expect to download the plans. You have to have somebody on the inside, and that somebody on the inside has to have a, a certain amount of combination codes in order to break in. And then even if you do, it's still blocked behind you. That's why R2 is right. telling uh, C-3PO, it's like, oh, they, 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 uh, they disengaged a the tractor pull on purpose. Like we're yeah. they're just letting us go, and C three P is like, wait, what? And then all of a sudden the blaster starts getting, you know, coming at them. Yeah, those little things was, yeah, the, they're not going to just let these guys go. They they have a plan right. too. That was yeah. that was always the good part about the Empire was they were they always also had a plan. So. I think we're hitting the end of the episode. We don't have a whole lot of uh, records to talk about because Mandalorian's right now, and I haven't learned, <laughs> I haven't listened to any records from from probably ten years. <laughs> there's, there's, there's very few. So, what do you got that you want to want to shout out to? Because we're about done. Well, I mean, what would you like to see? I mean, being that we've seen the ability of the Mandalorian happen. What do you feel like would be a good side story that could be built off? I know they tried the Han Solo thing, which ultimately failed, but I really didn't think it was that bad. I actually kind of enjoyed it. I thought um, I thought it was a little bit boring. I thought it was a lot unnecessary. I like Han Solo as a... You don't really need to know his past. Well, then that's the thing. The origin stories are always a little boring because you're trying to get past that... We we already know who this person is. Let's just see some some action from his earlier days. Right. So reestablishing a backstory is always a killer. It's kind of like the the Spider Man movies. How many times are we going to redo the origin of Spider Man or Fantastic Four? We got it already. Let's just let's move on to to a story that's like showing them in action, right? Exactly. And and that's the problem with doing any kind of of new side story from Star Wars because. You're going to have to try to dive back into where it all started. You know, uh, could you do a, <laughs> how weird would it be to, to, to try to do a Chewbacca show, right? 
because right. somebody has to speak English sometime. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think there's a lot of I think there's a lot of stuff that that could be done to really enhance it. Again, you have to speak English and it has to be current to the universe that they're living in. Right. Again, right. not to the universe that we're living in. Well, like the, the high point of the prequel series, it's like, man, I wouldn't mind seeing some more Darth Maul stuff, you know? And I think they did that in the cartoons. Um, yeah, but, you know, I'd rather see an actual, you know... I would like, like I, I had this whole idea for what a prequel series should be, given given the timelines and the Clone Wars and the whole idea. Um, and it was, if you have, if you have Anakin as a boy who's a who's a Force sensitive, you have Padme who's also a Force sensitive, but not quite that we could rewrite this entire story kind of like Mandalorian is and set it in a world that is not based on politics and whatever spice code yeah. or you know, like there's yeah. so yeah. much crap in the prequel series. It's like you, you could have a love story and a hate story and a and a buddy cop movie and camaraderies. You mm -hmm. you could take so many you could take Lethal Weapon. Take Lethal Weapon, the movie. Yep. Scrape out the eighties, overlay Star Wars. And it would have been the hey. most amazing Star Wars yeah, movie ever. Put them in Coruscant, right? Have them in the busy streets, almost kind of like a Blade Runner type exactly. atmosphere. So, and yeah, I mean that, that I thought that too. And that, that's another thing I said about the the new series. It's like of all the things you can do, as big as this galaxy is, we're kind of stuck still revisiting the same thing over and over. Mm -hmm. I say that, but I love the Mandalorian. But there's a possibility, and hopefully this is what Lucas is doing because he's kind of gotten control over everything again because of the new series didn't do as well as they expected. But take it somewhere else, man. I mean, we're in a galaxy. It doesn't have to be the same three planets we go to all the time. Let's let's experience something different, you know? Totally. And uh, Yeah, and I think there's a great opportunity for that. So that's why I'm kind of hopeful. I'm thinking that maybe they'll start seeing that. And you could take, just like you were talking about, uh, the lethal weapon kind of idea, put them in a busy... Star Wars Universe City and let them be fighting crime mm -hmm. and you're dealing with uh, you know people that are tied into you know some kind of underground empire group or whatever or after the fall of the empire and they're trying to build their own empire or you could take it any direction if you want to make it interesting they're fighting for the empire and then later oh, on yeah. realize oh crap we were on the wrong side the whole time well, just like, like they did with the stormtrooper right <laughs> So here, here's the thing about that, too, because we were told our whole, well, since the, the, the prequels, that all Stormtroopers are all clones of Jango Fett. But in the new series, we got, you know, guy taking off his helmet and saying, this is wrong. I'm not doing this anymore. And then there's a whole group of Stormtroopers that have rebelled. It's like, mm. yeah, hey, it's loopholes. I mean, you can poke holes in anything, but... Which is it? <laughs> you know, are they clones? Are they not clones? <laughs> Lucas, again, you've raped my childhood, man. Yep. <laughs> Except John Favreau, you've redeemed it. Absolutely, so we love you. Um, yeah, abs without a doubt. Yeah, this is the way. Hey, everybody! Thank you for tuning in to the new show. We will be back next week or the week after with some other subject that we're going to talk about. We love you, and we'll see you next week. And hey, if if you give us, let us know what you think on this stuff, right? I mean, if you're a Mandalorian fan, or if we're totally wrong about the series, we're gonna have a Facebook page. You can jump on there. We haven't. I don't think we've got it set up just yet, but we're working on it. <laughs> but hey, if you if you got some things you want us to just chat about, or if you want to join the conversation, or just give us your two cents worth and tell us how wrong we are. Feel free to do so. We want this to be interactive on on a on a larger scale as well. So, 
yeah, appreciate you guys hanging out with us. And I, I don't know about Billy, but I'm I'm enjoying this because this is just a laid back. You're you're getting to see the inner workings of of both of us. So I think that's kind of a cool thing instead of just telling you facts about movies and whatnot. I'm having a blast. We'll talk about the next steps because we got so many movies. We got Jaws. We got Jaws 2. We got Jaws 3. We got Jaws 4. So that's like four episodes. We got Orca. Dude, and Orca. So that's five. That's a five part <laughs> episode before we even move on to the next subject. Um, <laughs> we're going to talk. Dude, we just got so much stuff that we can chat about. Hopefully the quarantine gets lifted and we can like. Well, you're still really far away, so we'll still be on the phone. It's okay. But, yeah, quarantine will get lifted, and we can talk <laughs> to our neighbors again. We can buy eggs. It, it'll be cool. <laughs> we can talk about that <laughs> breakfast taco we had. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. I'm going to have to hang up the phone. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Adios, man. Bye.